Mike Tyson's career is full of mysteries and secrets, and now in this video, we will try to better reveal the boxing path of this phenomenal man. Mike Tyson burst into the world of professional boxing like a whirlwind. Akin to the bright flight of a comet, he began his journey in professional boxing in March of 1985, and by the end of that same year, had engaged in 15 fights, winning each of them by knockout in his favor. Not a single bout went beyond four rounds. These impressive results did not go unnoticed, and at the end of the year, Ring Magazine recognized Iron Mike as the most promising All boxer. The way from San Jose, California. Boxing fans, here is Irish Michael Jameson. The year 1986 started with tougher opponents for the young boxer. On January 11th, he knocked out the experienced journeyman David Jaco in the first round. And on January 24th, he faced the active journeyman Mike Jameson. Jameson had an impressive record before the bout with the rising star. 13 victories, 5 by knockout, and 10 defeats. His resume included bouts with serious names such as Scott Frank, Yakovlev Lopez, Frank Bruno, Randall Cobb, and Michael Dokes. Only Bruno had managed to break Jameson's resistance prematurely. For a young Tyson, Jameson represented a serious opponent. 16 straight knockouts from Catskill, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Mike Tyson. Now on the verge of becoming a world-class man. Don't blink. This is Jameson's dimensions did not help him withstand Tyson, who easily closed the distance and shook his opponent with powerful blows. Jameson had to use the clinch frequently to neutralize the power of his dangerous adversary. The first round unfolded in a similar manner, and at the end of the round, Tyson staggered Jameson, but the bell interrupted the development of success. For a new heavyweight. Head heavyweight through a combination of five and six punches, but Mike Tyson does it. Here he is again, 19 and three quarter inches. Tyson the strong left to Jameson. This is the first round he's trying to finish. The script of the fight did not change in the second round. Tyson continued to pursue an opponent who avoided collisions. Except for weak attempts to stop Tyson with the jab, Jameson did not take active actions in the attack. Despite a few noticeable moments when Tyson rocked Jameson, the latter managed to avoid more serious blows again. He has been continually pushing forward, pushing forward. He's after him, and that's the end of round, round number, number two. Mike Tyson takes a quick left from Jameson. And he has set the pace right, up, right from the word go. Mike Tyson is a finisher. He's established that early in his career. Jameson is uh, doing what I think he has to do, and that's keep on the move. At and age 19, trying to extend his record to 17 and all. Immediately come back with a good left hook to the body. That's a very good sign at this young fighter. This is what experience will tell. Everybody's yet to find this out. It's a a tremendous power. His opponent weighs 236 pounds, and he is just pushing this big guy all over the ring, pushing him away. Tyson, very, very dedicated for Olympics in Los Angeles. Jameson has uh, sub sub started to feel the effects of those big punches, such as that good right hand that snuck him there. And he's starting to who knows how to get him out of there, and he's going about it the right way. Here he comes, Tyson, who wants to be a finisher. For those wicked punches he throws. He's connecting very well, though, some good body shots, hard body shots. Jameson's 1984 Olympic gold medalist. And Maneuver him from, maneuvering him into positions where he wants him to be so as he can... Jameson grabbed him, held on to him, cleared his head a little bit. A little bit of experience is starting to show here. Jameson, he knows what to do when he gets hurt. You, you, I... I caught just when Jameson went into that clinch there. He's six foot four, yet he dropped his head really low to get that left jab out and keep this little guy off you. He Here did. comes Tyson. Jameson back. People have compared his punching power to guys like George Foreman and Joe Frazier saying he punches the same, but he's so much faster. Seriously, it's going to go in the eye and it's going to affect his vision. Uh, 
I think it was open with some of those nice uppercuts that uh, Tyson's been throwing when he gets close to him. At the end of this fourth, the boxing folks here in New Jersey that that would have to disappear, and it has. Good right hand landed there. Quite a bit of clutching and grabbing in the first three rounds. And if you were in that position, that would be a pretty good philosophy. You see the low blow, and Tyson gets a warning, and Jameson let everyone know that he'd been hit below the belt. Yeah, a little bit. Uh... Tyson gets a warning, and Jameson let everyone know that he'd been hit below the belt. Yeah, a little bit. Uh... You learn all these little tricks. Mike Tyson takes two steps forward. Let's go with a couple of lefts now. A right, a left. He's got him down. Mike Tyson. In the third round, the beating continued. And in the fourth round, Jamison was counted out after a powerful left uppercut Jameson from Tyson. Wants to continue. Watch the quick flurries that Tyson throws, Ken. Quite a contrast in conditioning here. Tyson superbly conditioned. 99% of the time, it did hurt him. The left, the right to the I side. really don't know what's keeping Jameson on his feet. He just, he's just one tough customer. Disrespect for the, what the, uh, at this point, what I think he should have been doing from the first goal, he just took a right. Despite Jameson's attempt to get up, his condition did not satisfy the referee who stopped the fight to prevent serious injuries. Jameson wants the referee. Joe Cortez says no. He asked Mike, Jameson, two or three times, are you out? At 46 seconds of the fifth round, and a winner by a TKO, Mike Tyson. Tyson. The year 1986 became one of the most important stages in the career of Iron Mike Tyson. The young phenomenon faced a significantly higher level of opposition. After Tyson fought against James Tillis and Mitch Green during May 1986, defeating each of them by unanimous decision, the 19-year-old boxer received a fair amount of criticism for not being able to knock out his opponents. The reputation of Iron Mike as the most dangerous heavyweight came into question. It was necessary to urgently preserve his punching reputation. And in the June match against the formidable Reggie Gross, Mike didn't disappoint his numerous fans. Reggie Gross began his professional career at the age of 20, knocking out a certain Blayforth Spencer in the first round in January of 1982. Having fought in 18 matches and winning 16 of them, Reggie secured one of the most significant victories in his career. January 1986. Reggie stepped into the ring with the undefeated fighter Burt Cooper, who had 10 wins and zero losses. In this bout, Gross emerged victorious with an eighth round knockout. And he does. Burt Cooper really got nailed. Turned his back. The undefeated streak in Reggie's career came to an end. After losing by points to Olympic champion Henry Tillman, the boxer was chosen as the victim for the rising star of professional boxer Mike Tyson. Mike aggressively started the fight. Closing the distance, he immediately began landing blows on his opponent while using his excellent reflexes to dodge Gross's counterattacks. After surviving for two minutes, Tyson's signature left hook delivered in a leap sent Reggie into a heavy knockdown.
He got up, but it was clear that he wouldn't hear the bell for the second round. Several more heavy blows from Tyson, and Reggie found himself knocked down for the second time in the fight. He rose again, but the referee decided to stop the one-sided beating and preserve the boxer's health. Shutting the mouths of critics, Tyson went on to achieve a series of six consecutive early victories, and by the end of 1986, he became the youngest world champion by knocking out Trevor Burbick in the second round. After an easy return to the ring from prison in a fight with Peter McNeely in August 1995, the legendary Mike Tyson continued to regain form and throw off the rust. The next entry into the ring of the cult fighter was scheduled for December 16, 1995. Mike's choice settled on the sturdy, undefeated 21-0 Buster Mathis Jr. Buster Mathis Jr. made his professional debut in December of 1991, defeating James Wilder on points. It was hard to find famous names in Buster's opposition, except for Tyrell Biggs, who was defeated by Tyson earlier. Buster Mathis defeated such a boxer by unanimous decision of the judges and Riddick Bowe, in which Mathis Jr. was saved from imminent defeat only by Bowe's too big temper. Since the fight was declared invalid after Big Daddy struck his opponent when he was knocked down. After that, Buster won the next six fights, and in December of 1995, he went out to fight with the legendary Mike Tyson. Please welcome the former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, the one, the only, Mike Tyson! 
Already in the first seconds, the boxer visited the flooring. True, it was not a knockdown, but Mathis Jr. simply did not keep his balance. After that, almost all of Tyson's attack were on defense, or Mathis dried the fight in a spoiler manner. But the third round was still destined to be the last. Nothing foreshadowed an imminent denouement. The round was held in the key of the previous two. But at the end of the round, Tyson finally put an end to the opponent's bullying of the audience. Seizing the moment, Iron Mike struck a powerful right uppercut, after which Mathis failed to recover. Jumping in, jumping out, pressing Mike, staying inside. We'll see what happens when he gets hit, though. Ronnie punches, there's a shot by Mike Tyson with the left. Made and miss with this movement, that slipping we talked about before. And again, Tyson coming and missing again with the left hook. Tyson misses again with the left. From the now he stand. With the left. And he comes with the right. And Mathis comes back, gang. Oh, he'll feel every punch tomorrow. Oh, and there is a nice right uppercut. And then Tyson counters himself. Now it's changing blows. Buster Mathis Jr. tonight, be defensive, and again, Tyson continues to miss, and missing again, and missing again. And he wasn't slipping where he did get hit, but tonight he's doing a good job slipping. Tyson missing again with the left uppercut. Says that he is physically stronger now. Ah, oh, low blow from Buster. Frank Cappuccino. Oh, Tyson trying with the right uppercut right there. Do him with that right foot and pivot. Swing around on your opponent's side and crash. After defeating Mathis, Mike will regain the championship title in a rematch with Frank Bruno. But this 
is a story for another video.